Good morning! My name is Nicole. I am a writer and story nerd and today's video is going to be a weekend writing vlog. It might just be Saturday, which is today. It might be two days. So keep watching and you'll find out how much footage I managed to get. Um, it is right now about quarter to ten. It's been like a very chill morning and we're going to start with the writing. I am right now working on semi-revising but really kind of just overhauling um, my Camp NaNoWriMo project from 2020. It is a novel called 1837 and it's about two sisters in the Upper Canada Rebellion in 1837. I have a bunch of videos about why <laughs> this first draft that I did is so bad and not really working and I'm now at the point where I am reworking through the story on paper and I am working on the characters, working on the plot, really doing a lot of brainstorming and getting a sense and feel for the story. So that's what I'm going to continue doing this morning and I'll tell you a little bit about it after I've done it. So this morning I have been working a lot on one character in particular, Drew, who I felt really didn't come through in the first draft. So I'm kind of revisiting his backstory and what he's all about and what his motivations are and what I'm doing with kind of his personality and his character overall to try to make him become more like A, active in the story, but B, like more vibrant, I guess, of a character because he's going to be a pretty important character, even more important potentially than he was in the original. So that's super exciting. Um, I started going through the anatomy of story for this yesterday. Before that, I was just kind of like brainstorming and writing things down and thinking things through and kind of writing out things that I liked and reasons I was inspired and stuff like that and sort of worked out the core of it. I'm gonna have a video about how I'm fixing this on its own. It's coming up pretty soon. But, um, so, I started doing anatomy of story because I like how they do character and I've always found that helpful and I also like how they do plot. And in the first draft, I didn't use the anatomy of story at all. I exclusively used the story grid and I feel like because I didn't use anything else, it the story grid isn't great at characters and it's not the greatest at like having a resonant theme either just for me so I found that the anatomy of story kind of helps me think through that so that's been good other big thing that I accomplished was I found a last name for Drew because yes I wrote a hundred thousand words about him and he didn't have a last name so I went through a bunch of English surname websites um, his family are they brew beer for a living and I couldn't have Drew like brewer because that sucked so I was looking for something else and I thought of like Shelton, like shelving people and I was going through a whole list anyways and then I came across one that was Tolmash, like T, I'll put the spelling of it on the screen and it means in old French, old knapsack or like ugly knapsack or something and I thought it was completely hilarious that that was a last name, old knapsack. So. <laughs> Instead of, I, I just was, I just decided on that one. I decided that his name is now Drew Tolmash and his entire family. And I think A, it's gonna be fun because it's more French than the English names that, that you have in Upper Canada right now. So there's Kent and Rolf and Jarvis and Mackenzie and Morris and like all these very English names and Scottish names than to have a French one of Tolmash. And it has an E on the end. It sounds great, but also the meaning is hilarious. Kia. Trying to figure out. <laughs> it's like a very winding path. It's like a little scavenger hunt thing to get to the curbside pickup at IKEA to get the bookshelf. Woo! Very excited to get the bookshelf so I can organize all my books. It's going. Woo, hey, get your Sally in there. You spin up. 
Okay, so this is super duper sad. We drove an hour and 40 minutes round trip to Ikea, got home, unloaded all the bookshelves, and then we got this one, the one I have still in the box, and tried to pick it up, and it had like a little crack through it, and then we picked it up, and it like came completely apart. So, <laughs> I will not be doing anything with my bookshelves today. I might try to do a little bit of organization with the books, but honestly, I'm just a little upset. So tomorrow, we get to do the whole thing over again and go back to Ikea, and yeah, so great, so happy. <laughs> it's a little frustrating when, obviously they're giving us a replacement for free, which is nice, and we're thinking like, maybe we could possibly put together like a really ugly bookshelf if we like glued it and then stuck wood on the sides or something. I'm a little skeptical of that plan of my dad's, but you know. So let's just go do some writing stuff to make it better. Okay, so it's nighttime. It's like quarter to nine, but I wanted to do a quick update because I'm about to start working on some notes organizing in Notion. I saw this really cool video from Ruby Granger, who's like a study tuber. She's British and her videos are so soothing. And she was all about, her video was sponsored about how she used Notion to organize her school notes. And I've been having such a hard time organizing my historical notes about 1837. And so I thought, why not try Notion? And she really like, emphasize the toggle so you can have like a row and you can toggle underneath it in like jot notes and add in links and other pages and all sorts of things so it sounds like it could potentially be perfect for my story so i'm gonna try that now and i'm gonna i'm watching gilmore girls while i'm transfer my notes over into notion and i will let you know how it goes seriously loving this for my timeline and I'm like I have all this stuff in my head of oh I can not only do the timeline I can do like all my historical research in Notion because it is exactly how I think with the toggles and all I will put a screenshot of what it looks like here I'm gonna show kind of the timeline that I've been working on so this is the 1837 page so I have all of the months of the year I don't there's probably not gonna be a chapter in every single month but it's good to know like all the different events and then for December, I get down into every single day because these are the days leading up to the rebellion. Then we click Tuesday and we have like the major events, but then I can click again and have even like all the details for the different events, which is great, including like the significance and like the future implications for later and the results of things, um, you know, because there were trials and things happening into 1838. And so this is perfect. I'm like, really <laughs> i'm really jazzed up about this i'm super excited so this is gonna be me for the rest of the night just watching gilmore girls and putting my timeline of the rebellion into notion good morning it is sunday and i am getting ready for my writing live stream that's at 9 so it's like 8 45 so i have to make my bed really quick because it's super messy and then run downstairs and get my laptop and get some water and try to move this piece of wood out of the way and yeah then we're gonna live stream i'm super excited i actually figured out how to use stream yard stream yard so it's gonna be better and absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I just started introducing myself, but I don't think I'm live yet. And StreamYard has this like very nerve-wracking countdown. Hold on. Oh, I gotta go! The live stream went really well. I said thank you so much to everyone who was there. I'm planning to do another one soon. And after the live stream, I took the dog for a walk. And then it was time to go back to Ikea. They, they beefed up a little bit, with, with, especially with him in the bottom six. Those are pretty respectable numbers for a team that hasn't been in the playoffs and it hit strong. In the afternoon, I decided to work out and I did a aerial yoga workout. I love aerial and I was learning a routine, like a dance routine here and practicing it. So enjoy.
cleaning mode in here right now, but I've been like sweeping the floor in my room and trying to reorganize things. And there's the bookshelf. No books are on it yet because I'm actually gonna move it to another wall. And we think we tried to super glue. You can see here. We tried to super glue this together and it looks like it might actually stand. So I might be able to put up like the broken bookshelf here. We're gonna add some brackets and things so it doesn't collapse and it'll just be for the lighter books, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, the rest of this afternoon is literally just cleaning things up because it's a mess in here and just uh, eventually transferring and reorganizing all the books. I didn't end up wrapping up the vlog, but it was a really lovely weekend. Thank you so much for watching.